Hi, I'm Dr. Courtney with the Quantitative Reasoning Center. Thanks for joining us for today's video. Uh, today we're going to talk about the fourth of the five frequently fatal freshman physics fantasies. The first one was fantasy of the miracle finish. The second one was fantasy of the soft-hearted professor. The third one was the fantasy that weak areas won't be tested. And the fourth one is the fantasy that college is a simple extension of high school. In other words, it's the idea that the same set of habits and preparation skills that you used uh, during high school are going to allow you to just cruise through college. And unfortunately, Calculus 2 might not have done enough to, to wake you up and shake you out of those high school preparation habits. In other words, you may have cruised through Calculus 2 without actually having to spend two hours of preparation outside of class for every class hour. But now you're in the big time. This is multivariable calculus. Calculus 3. This is the version of calculus that only the people who are destined to become science scientists and engineers have to get through. So this course ups the ante a little bit and will help shake you out of the fantasy uh, that uh, high school, uh, that college is a simple extension of high school. Okay, keeping in mind that I've changed the numbers a little bit, uh, this problem here is to find the volume, and it, it tells us some extra information in the book, to use polar coordinates to find the volume below this surface, and this is a paraboloid, and above the xy plane. Hmm. Hmm. Now this is an interesting problem and there's quite a bit to it. So let's, let's take some care, let's draw a picture, and let's see if we can't uh, make a plan. So returning to our idea format, uh, the big idea is to use integration to find the volume. In other words, we want to integrate our function, which is a function of x and y, uh, at least in Cartesian coordinates. It's 18 minus x squared minus y squared. But as we begin our development, uh, our plan, we're going to use a picture, our very good diagram, to determine limits of integration. We have to convert f of xy to f of r and theta. In other words, we have to convert to polar coordinates to use polar coordinates. Then we have to express our integral in polar coordinates. And then we're going to use MATLAB to compute the integral. All right, well, that's got a lot to it. Um, so some challenges in this one. And then, you know, how are we going to assess this? Let's think about that because one of the nice things, if you can express an integral both in polar coordinates and in Cartesian coordinates, you can work the integral both ways as part of your double check, as part of your assessment. And if the integral is the same both ways, that increases your confidence that you've solved the problem correctly. All right, so go ahead and think about uh, our picture. So, well, what does this function look like? 18 minus x squared minus y squared. So this is an upside down paraboloid. So if this is the xy plane here, right, it starts at 18 and it comes down and it intersects the xy plane. And you can tell if you set z equals 0, we can figure out this curve of intersection in the xy plane. So that would imply that uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 18. 
So the intersection with the xy plane is actually the region of integration in the xy plane. So the region of, inter inter the region of integration is given by the circle here. So in other words, we can think about our region in the xy plane as being, well, it's a circle with a radius of the square root of 18. The square root of 18 is just a smidge more than 4. And uh, please use your imagination to turn my more egg or elliptical logic. Think about this as a circle. And so our top half, we could say, is y equals the square root of 18 minus x squared. And the bottom half is y is equal to the negative square root of 18 minus x squared. So now we've got our limits of integration and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and express what this integral would be in Cartesian coordinates. Well we would just go, we need to cover the whole circle here. So we do go over dy first and our integrand is the paraboloid and the paraboloid is 18 minus x squared minus y squared uh, over dy first and then over dx. So our inside lower limit of integration is negative square root of 18 minus x squared. Our upper limit of integration is y equals the square root of 18 minus x squared. And we're going from x is equal to negative square root of 18 to x is equal to positive square root of 18 because these are how one would set up the Cartesian coordinates to cover the whole circle of the radius of square root of 18. But now we need to think about expressing your integral in polar coordinates and we need to recall that in polar coordinates r is equal to x squared plus y squared. So our function of r and theta turns out it only depends on r and it's a oop, this should be r squared equals x squared plus y squared so anyway 18 minus r squared turns out to be our function and now uh, we can in integrate over r on the inside and integrate from r equals 0 to r equals the square root of 18 and our integrand is 18 minus r squared. And then we need to recall how dx dy converts to dr and d theta. Uh, and because it's a common mistake to think that dx dy is simply equal to dr d theta, when really is equal to r dr d theta. And you can reverse the order. But think about keeping the units right, right? Because dx dy has a differential unit of area. If x and y were measured in meters, then dx times dy would be square meters. But r is still only meters, so to make the units work out, we need an extra factor of r in our differential. There's other ways about thinking about that fact that are presented in your book and probably in lecture as well. But by keeping the unit straight, knowing you need two units of length, that's kind of how I remember it. All right, so we put in our r, dr, d theta, and then theta, because we're integrating over r from 0 to the square root of 18. And since we're covering the whole circle here, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, because that's how you integrate all the way around the circle. All right, well, we've set it up in Cartesian coordinates. We've set it up in polar coordinates. So now it's time to move the camera over to MATLAB for MATLAB to do the rest of the heavy lifting. Okay, we have the MATLAB command window open. And since we're gonna first do the double integral in polar coordinates, we want to hit it with a sims r theta I want to just call it theta th and we make those real variables because we're going to use those as our variables of integration. Now we can address the inside integral. And the inside integral we'll use the int command. And the integrand is 18 minus r squared. 
and the inside integral is over the variable r, and the limits of integration are from r equals 0 to r equals the square root of 18. And it'll think about it and then tell us that that's the answer. And now the outside integral, which is our final answer in this case, is equal to int. The integrand is the inside integral. The variable of integration is theta. And theta goes from 0 to 2 times pi. So we have 72 times pi times the square root of 2 as our answer. And we can double check this, as I mentioned before, by reworking the integral in Cartesian coordinates. So let's hit it with a sims xy real. And the, the function in terms of xy is 18 minus x squared minus y squared. So now the inside integral, we'd hit it with the in command. And our first variable of integration is going to be over dy. So our function, our integrand is f. Take some care here. Our integrand is f. Our variable of integration is y. Our lower limit is the square root of 18 minus x squared. And actually, our lower limit of integration is the negative square root of that. And our upper limit of integration is positive square root of 18 minus x squared. And so that's the integral over the, well, the, the inside integral. And now that looks a lot different. So are we, are we losing confidence? Because the outside integral is going to be the integral over the inside integral over the variable x. So the inside, this is our integrand, this is our variable of integration, and now we need to give some consideration to our limits of integration. And our limits of integration to cover the whole circle were from negative, the square root of 18, to the positive square root of 18. And so this uh, well, this looks a little different. This is 162 pi in this case. And the other one, let's scroll back up because it's possible that we made a careless error somewhere. Uh, the other one was 72 pi times the square root of 2. And 72 pi times the square root of 2 is not the same as 162 pi. So let's bring down our history window and let's uh, think about our assessment. Did we carry out our assessment properly or is it possible uh, that we have an error uh, in our problem? Hmm. We have an error so looking at this a little more carefully, it's clear that we have an error in our original integration because we have the integrand 18 minus r squared, but we need to multiply that by r to account for the r that snuck in in the differential. So in this case, our assessment actually was very valuable because it caught a careless mistake. So let's go ahead and repeat that command. And then we need to multiply this by r to account for the r that pops up uh, from dx dy being equal to r dr d theta. All right, and now we can compute the outside integral. And now we get 162 pi. And we get 162 pi when we integrate in polar coordinates, and that agrees with the 162 pi that we got when we integrated in Cartesian coordinates. So that's very satisfying, and now we have some confidence that our answer is correct.
correct.